I decided to uh, take a head core of our sample since we use the expensive deuterated DMSO. Why not? Um, so head core stands for heteronuclear correlation spectroscopy, and it's a two-dimensional NMR where it compares your hydrogen and your carbon NMR. And um, the way you run it, I, I didn't in the video. I didn't show me entering the commands. What you do is you start with the P. The AAI PNMR software, you start with that and you uh, make sure you're in the carbon setting. So if you aren't, aren't you type NU space C13. And then you just type HET core, hit enter, and then it'll ask you relaxation delay, two seconds again, enter, and then uh, for scans, do four and enter. And then it'll, it'll take the data for you, collect the data for you. It'll take about 10 minutes. And then when it's done, you, uh, it'll ask you if you want to auto process it. You'll just click yes, which you'll see in the next video. All right, I'm taking a head core NMR, two-dimensional NMR. I figure, why not? We spent all this money on bottle service. Let's get all the spectra. So right now it's acquiring that. Um, it's, uh, it's getting six out of 50 slices down, about seven minutes remaining. You can see the FID data pulsing on the screen. All right, my head core scans are complete. It asks me if I want to automatically process the head core. I do. And here it is. It looks pretty good. I'm going to zoom in on the carbon NMR from 0 to a little past 200. On the proton NMR, about 10. 0 to 10. And then I'll add a text box. Here's our head core spectrum for the benzoin. You'll notice when I put that benzoin down, it's not covering up any signals. Okay, let's label these. So we got hydrogens, group A, B, C, and then we have water we talked about in the deuterated DMSO and TMS, of course, at the end. And then, uh, and remember, it's kind of confusing. The hydrogen scale, it's way over here. So see, TMS is around zero, and these aromatics are around 78. And now for the carbon up above, here, I'll put the laser point, I always forget that. The carbon up above, you've got your numbers down here so like the carbonyl signal around 200 so let's say what like we did before one two three four five to nine and ten and now let's see what this tells us one thing we can notice is this signal here we know uh, its proton signal is should be around this area and its carbon should be around here so we know now it confirms boom that that signal right there in the head core tells us that Carbon or hydrogen C, at least some of them, the methine one, not the alcohol one. The methine one is can those hydrogens or that hydrogen is connected to carbon signal 10. There it is. And then another one we can get is uh, this one here, the carbonyl. Uh, the carbonyl has how many hydrogens on it? That carbon has zero hydrogens. So if we say that's number one, then we should have no correlation to a hydrogen signal. And we don't. There's no signals right here. Nice, huh? And then the, uh, oh, let's go back. The aromatic signals, all these here, two through nine, they're showing some correlations there. So let's, uh, let's zoom in and see if we can find out some more about this. So I'm going to zoom into this area of the HET core. Here it is. Our benzoin again, I'm putting it off over here so I don't cover up any area there. So this is signal grouping A, like we saw before, and B. And now these are carbon signals 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You can look down at their values and say, yeah, 2 is at 140. Oh, yeah, that's right, the same one. Okay, so what does this tell us? It tells us that, look at this, carbon 2 and 3 have no hydrogens. So how are we going to use that? This is how we use it. Well, actually, <laughs> before I talk about that, let's look at Carb uh, hydrogens A, they're the more downfield ones. The SDBS website told us it's these two ortho to the ketone. The ketone, because it's an electron withdrawing group, kind of makes sense to me, right? Like we learned in electrophilic aromatic substitutions. And then uh, sp3 carbons with an oxygen, it might be slightly withdrawing, but they, sp3 carbons are usually electron donating, so it makes sense. They might be shielding. Um, so anyways, we got the uh, two hydrogens here, their signal A, and if that's true, it looks to me like these line up well with, right here with carbon five. So I'm gonna take a guess that that is carbon five. This is the most upfield, downfield right, left, corresponds to hydrogen A. 
and it integrates to two hydrogens as well, if you remember, so it looks good. And now what about our uh, two carbons that have no hydrogens on them that are in the aromatic region? So which ones are those? Remember the trend, if you're a carbon without a hydrogen on you, with zero hydrogens, you tend to be a shorter signal. So what are our shorter ones here? Carbon signal two, three, and eight are all pretty short four, five, six, seven, nine are taller. So I'm gonna guess those are two or three, and when I look at the het core, carbon three has no hydrogens associated with it. Carbon two has no hydrogens associated. It looks like eight does. It looks like A is associating with hydrogens in the B grouping. So that may, leads me to believe this is either carbon signal two or three, and then that one's either three or two. It's pretty nice, huh? Can't. I'm not gonna be able to assign all of these absolutely, but uh, I'll get a few. Uh, which is nice. And uh, I'm going to be giving you this spectra in your report worksheet, and then you'll fill it out as best you can, like I taught you. I ran a depth uh, spectrum. I forgot to record myself t uh, entering the commands. It's, uh, it's easy, though. You just make sure you're in the carbon setting, so NU space C13, enter. And then you type depth, D-E-P-T, hit enter, and it takes about five minutes to run, and then it'll ask you if you want to auto-process at the end, and You'll see that in my video to come. Okay, the depth is done. I ran a depth and I'm going to say yes to auto processing. And here it is, looking pretty good. I'm using the, uh, the wheel on the mouse to make these peaks a little shorter because before some of them were pushing up to the other ones. That looks pretty good. Yeah. I'll, uh, I have to come out of that stack plot mode, drag from. 200 to zero-ish, right click, and then uh, get back to the stack plot mode by typing SP. There we go, and now I just need to type a text box and capture this data. Okay, here's our depth spectra, distortionless enhancement by polarization transfer. I don't really know what that means. It has to do with some pulse sequences that are run which I don't quite get, but I can still look at the spectra and learn from it. So this is our sample we made with the deuterated DMSO. So we're seeing all our carbon signals. So here's our benzoin again. This first spectrum on top is called the depth 35, 135, I mean. And uh, it does not show signals for carbons that have no hydrogen. So if it's a CH0, no hydrogens, you won't see a signal. If, it has one, if a carbon has one hydrogen on it, the signal will point in the upward direction like you normally see in carbon NMR. And if it has two hydrogens on it, it actually points downward. We don't, you don't see one of those right now, but you'd see a signal pointing down. If it has three hydrogens, the signal points upward. So the even, I mean the odd number of hydrogens on a carbon, your signals point up. If you see it's two down, no hydrogens, no signal. Okay, so let's see what this tells us. So we have no CH2s because there's no peaks pointing downward, huh? So let's look at our molecule, see if that makes sense. This carbon has zero hydrogens, not a CH2. This has one hydrogen, not a CH2. One hydrogen, not a CH2. One, 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 one. No CH2, so this confirms it. That's good. And now let's number our, our carbons. We got one, four, five through nine, ten. So look at that. We're missing carbon signals one through three. So what does that mean? That means they must be carbons with zero hydrogens because they're not shown. So uh, if we go over here, we have a carbonyl carbon, which should be at about 200. It's not showing. So that means that it's a carbon with no hydrogens. It looks good. This carbon and this carbon, we said earlier, we think there were three and two signals, three and two, two and three, and, and they didn't show up. So it confirms the two spectra agree. And then uh, this carbon four all by itself here, it could be a CH because it points CH1 because it points up, or it could be a CH3 because it's pointing up. We we don't know until we learn about this guy. And then five through nine, I'm gonna focus in on, on the next slide. But ten could be a CH because the signal's pointing up, or it could be a CH3. Uh, we don't know yet, but when we come down now to this depth 90 spectrum, for this one, CH signals uh, with zero hydrogens, no, not CH, just carbons without hydrogens, they don't show up again. If you're a carbon with one hydrogen, you show up and you point upward. Two hydrogens, don't show up. Three hydrogens, don't show up. So oh, this one will clear things up for us. Since carbon four does have a signal here, it must be a CH, so we eliminate the CH3 possibility. 
Carbon 10 is also showing up, so it as well is a CH. And that makes sense because we uh, said carbon 10 signal was the one that was corresponded to the hydrogen signal C in the HET core. So, and that, and lo and behold, this has one hydrogen. So, like I'm saying, it has one hydrogen. So, carbon 4, though, can be a bunch of different choices here. Um, now, let's look at the depth 45. The depth 45 doesn't tell you much, it's pretty redundant. It, uh, it once again doesn't show you carbons with hy without hydrogens, and it does show you positive signals for all the other ones. So it's sort of a re repetition of these. It doesn't really tell you anything. All right, now uh, let's zoom in on the signals five to nine. Here it is. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's look at these. So these are all, since they're all pointing upward here, they're all either CHs or CH3s. Okay, and then if I had to come down to the depth 90, I'll see four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and they're all pointing upward again. So what does that tell us? That means all of these are CH1s. So let's come over to our spectrum here and look at it. So we have this guy here with no hydrogens. We said that was two or three, same here, three or two. And now this one, we said that was signal five. Each, each of those have one hydrogen in there agreeing with us, one hydrogen. So now we just have to address signals 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. So let's see, we got these guys are CH1s. That's a CH1. Those are CH1s. CH1, CH1. So let's call these all X, and we'll say X is, uh, each X is either carbon signal 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's not um, all that informative, but it does confirm uh, what we saw in the other spectra. And you can see this, this can be very useful.